So today we're going to check out two revolutionary restaurant chains here in Lima, Peru. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So there's two restaurant chains, like local Lima restaurant chains that I've heard about, and both of them have interesting stories. And the uh, original locations of both of them are right next to each other, like right around the corner. So, come along, let's check them out. So the first one we're checking out is called Tip Top. And uh, we're in the neighborhood of Lince in Lima, Peru. And these two chains, both uh, quite revolutionary for their time. One of them much older, the other one much newer. But both of them sort of uh, had a new take on the, on what would be typical Peruvian food, right? And they blended in some new ideas and became like a new revolutionary concept. So the first one we're going to, Tip Top, like I mentioned, is, uh, is basically like an American style uh, diner, sort of like a drive-in diner. It's actually credited as being the first fast food restaurant in Peru first Peruvian fast food restaurant and uh, it's right down the street here so we're gonna go check it out it's founded in 1953 it was made so it's been around for a while so Tip Top is the creation of a Peruvian couple Maria Inez Delgado de Baracale and Carlos Baracale Ramos and they were uh, planning to open a restaurant in Peru They'd been to the United States and they had seen how popular the new drive-in restaurants were in the United States, a restaurant where they would bring the food right out and you could eat it right in your car. Very novel idea at the time. And they brought that back to Peru with the idea that here in Lima it would be very popular. And they made a Peruvian food menu using typical Peruvian dishes like um, typical Peruvian foods like salchipapas, and um, like chicha morada and things like that. And you can actually see on the menu here outside the restaurant, that this is what they serve. They serve like Peruvian roast chicken, salchipapas, they even serve anticucho here. And um, originally the restaurant started out as just a, an ice cream parlor where they only served ice cream. And they didn't have any seating inside, so they would just bring it out to your cars. And then as it got more and more popular, it sort of expanded more added some indoor seating and opened up other locations as well. There is a second one of these in Miraflores. Um, there used to be, I think, a couple more around the city, but they've since closed. Um, but the place, very, very reminiscent of a United States drive-in, one of the old classic drive-ins. Now, even these in the United States are not super popular anymore. They don't really exist. Um, in the way like they did back in the 50s, the 60s, and even the 70s. Of course, you have drive throughs and there are a lot of uh, U U.S. fast food chains that have made their way into Peru, but Tip Top was the first sort of a fast food concept restaurant in Lima, Peru. So it was really revolutionary for its time. So you can see it's right here on a busy corner. Um, it has a nice sized parking lot outside, and if you look up close, you can see it's got a very uh, typical 50s, 60s, USA style drive-in uh, look to it. And if we cross the street here, um, when we get closer, you can actually see that they have these, um, you know, the little like awnings on the outside where people would park under. Now, I've been told that they don't actually do the car hop thing here anymore that since they've opened the uh, dining room inside, people basically just park outside and then they go up and either order to go at the, uh, at the, like the kitchen counter there, or they can uh, go inside and there's a whole seating area. But as you can see, it's pretty busy today. Like there's a, there were a bunch of people there um, parked in there, just like sitting in the outside area, sitting in the dining area and getting like to-go food and 
It's a nice, uh, nice sort of uh, covered but outdoor seating area. Very nice place to have lunch. So taking a quick look at the menu here at the tip top. If you open it up, it's a pretty extensive menu. They've got all the things you would expect for a drive-in like burgers, sandwiches, french fries. They also have desserts like ice cream. And surprisingly to me, they have, uh, they serve alcohol. They have like a full bar. You can get beer and even like mixed drinks here. So you could get like a Pisco Sour if you wanted to. Um, but they have like traditional or more traditional popular Peruvian dishes like roasted chicken, which you serve with like uh, you know, a side of french fries and a uh, salad. And then they have chicha morada, of course, uh, right here on the menu as well. They serve salchicha papas. You know, the french fries with the cut up sausage, fried egg on top. They even, like I mentioned, have anticucho, which is like, you know, organ meats. They have skewered beef hearts that they season and grill. So it's, uh, it's a pretty extensive menu. And they also have something here called the Tipto Reya, which is like their signature sandwich. You can see it in the picture right here. It's kind of like a chicken salad sandwich with melted cheese on top. It looks very, very good. And they also serve milkshakes, lots of different kinds of milkshakes, um, and they're famous for those as well. So we've ordered Tipto Reya and a Milo shake, which is like their special milkshake here, specialty milkshake. I don't know quite what's in it, but it's going to be delicious. I'm really, really uh, kind of excited to check this out. Uh, it's also quite interesting that they have a full bar with like mixed drinks, so you can actually come to like a drive-in you know, a 50s style drive-in, get yourself a, uh, you know, like a, like a burger if you wanted, I guess. Or you could get yourself like anticucho. And a mixed drink, like a pisco sour or a cuba libre. Kind of crazy. So our food has arrived and we got our milkshake. And, uh, well, let's turn it around here so we can see the uh, tip top. There we go, the tip top logo on the milkshake. Now, the milkshake, I tried it, and it was kind of, um, it was interesting. It was kind of like a vanilla milkshake that almost had like a little bit of chocolate in it too, and it had sort of a malty kind of flavor. It was an interesting flavor. Um, it was not something I was used to, but it was very, very tasty. And then, of course, our sandwich arrived. Titorega. And uh, the sandwich was actually, it looked pretty good. It's like a triple sandwich, which is basically like a two layer sandwich with a layer of bread in the middle. The bottom layer was like a chicken salad. The top layer was like ham. It had a piece of bread in the middle to separate the two. And then on top, it had like melted cheese. They topped each one, you know, like each section off with like an olive. Came with french fries. Uh, it was very, very good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And the um, the ketchup, here's interesting, I wanted some ketchup for the french fries, the ketchup here was like really, really sweet. It almost tasted like a sweet and sour sauce that you would get at like a Chinese restaurant or something. Very, very sweet ketchup. Interesting. I don't know if it was my favorite ketchup of all time, but it was good for this purposes and we ate the entire thing and it was quite filling, I will tell you. Um, afterwards, we were, we were very, very full. Well, it was a tasty sandwich. It's a tasty milkshake, and it was like the sweetest ketchup I've ever had in my entire life. And even though this is my first time here in Peru, in Lima, and even though it's my first time ever eating at that place, somehow it made me feel nostalgic because it is very much like a uh, you know a 50s style drive-in um, restaurant, like from the United States. Now that of course is a really weird thing for me to say because I wasn't even alive back in the 50s in the United States. Uh, that's way before my time, but sometimes you get a strange nostalgia for times that are even before you were born, if you understand what I mean. And uh, I don't know, I, this this sort of brought that out, that feeling of, um, of uh, you know, 1950s, 1960s Americana. Even though I was not alive to experience it, it made me feel nostalgic. But it has Peruvian food. Very interesting concept. I can see why it was uh, quite revolutionary in its time. Now, the other place that we're gonna go to 
is literally right here around the corner. But we're not gonna go there now because I'm really full. But later today, when I'm hungry again, we're gonna check it out. And like I said, it's right here, right around the corner from this other place. The first location of the other restaurant we're checking out, and that restaurant is Siete Sopas. Siete Sopas. So, stick around, and later, we'll check this place out too. Okay, so we're returning now to Siete Sopas, and I'm really excited about this place actually. So, this place, uh, the first one opened in 2016, and uh, I know that it's like a big, um, very large restaurant, two floors, and they do sort of like a industrial style serving where they make, you know, tons of soup. I, I would, I don't know how to compare it to, uh, like what restaurants in the United States I would compare it to, but it's sort of like a, I don't know, like a very large, like family style restaurant. Um, but they're doing, um, what would be, I guess, like traditional criollo type, uh, Peruvian food. I don't know. All I know is that they opened the first one in 2016. They've opened a lot more of them in different neighborhoods in Lima since then. And from what I've read, every time they open one in another neighborhood, it's like super, super popular. And the lines are out the, out the door, around the corner, and all the way down the block. So it seems like it's pretty popular. Right now it doesn't seem that busy, but what the hell. Let's go check it out. I'm pretty hungry. So Siete Sopas is uh, owned by a restaurant group called Lucha Partners. And uh, it all sort of starts back with this guy, Cesar Taboada. And he was a, uh, like a chef who was making sandwiches, basically, just like selling sandwiches as a street vendor originally. Eventually, he opened up uh, a sandwich shop in Miraflores called La Lucha, which is actually pretty famous uh, itself. Um, but also now, um, Siete Sopas, and there are several locations of Siete Sopas, not only uh, here in Lima, but also up in Trujillo, which is like a city further up the coast, um, north of Lima. And so it's super successful, uh, super successful, but owned, you know, by a restaurant group and sort of um, opened with a planned concept. And that's one of the things that's really interesting about this is um, because they already had experience opening up restaurants, they had this whole planned concept for how the restaurant was going to be and that they were going to take criollo food and they were going to take delicious criollo soups and they were going to make a restaurant out of it. And each one of the locations is in basically the same footprint, like the, the layout is the same. They're usually on a corner um, in a popular neighborhood and the buildings look the same. We actually saw one of them um, like over in Miraflores which looks the same as the Lince one. And so super popular. And when they do open in new neighborhoods and they are opening in new neighborhoods, they're expanding all over. Um, it, the line is like out the door and around the block for people to, um, to try and get in to, to go because they're really, really popular and people seem to really, really, really love the food at these places. It would be one thing if you just opened up, you know, um, a new restaurant chain on the success of your previous restaurants with your name recognition, but the fact that uh, people seem to think the food itself is really, really delicious, that's I think what really makes it for this restaurant. So it's very interesting and um, it's a really sort of a revolutionary take on criollo food because you're taking it and um, fitting that delicious food into this like really well-managed restaurant concept that has like um, it's very well planned out and it has like a very high potential for expansion out into different places in Lima and also out into different cities in Peru. The soup area in front is actually uh, open to the street in front so you can actually order to go soup and bread from right here without having to go into the restaurant. Relatively small menu but all the stuff looks delicious. We decided to go with the soup of the day, which today on Sunday is sancochado, which is like a, I don't know, a traditional soup. It seems like a, a soup where they bring you a big bowl of broth and uh, a bunch of delicious stuff to put into it. So, we're 
to check that out. Looks like uh, looks like it's going to be delicious. This place is uh, pretty cool inside. It has a very sort of uh, industrial style look. There's a lot of people in here. We did have to wait a little bit. There's an upstairs, which uh, I don't think is open right now, but I imagine for like dinner, they open it. We're here at lunch. So uh, we'll check it out and see how it is. So San Cochado, it is not a delicious bowl of broth with a bunch of stuff that they have you put in it. The stuff's already in there and it is like a beef soup that uh, usually has like tubers, potatoes, yucca, um, some other sorts of root vegetables like turnip or carrot. Um, they put cabbage in it, they'll put celery in it sometimes, leeks, uh, usually legumes also like beans or chickpeas. And you can sort of vary what kind of stuff goes in it, but basically this one had potatoes, it had yucca, it had cabbage, um, chickpeas, and it had corn, like the the um, choclo, which is like uh, Peruvian style corn that has these very big kernels and it's very sort of starchy. It's really, really good. It also had cabbage. Did I say cabbage? It had cabbage. And um, they served it with this sort of side of um, stuff that you can add to it, like limes that you can squeeze in, lime juice. They had like dried, um, like dried corn that you could sprinkle on top for a little texture. There was like this herb mix that I think was like cilantro and maybe even a little basil. Um, and then like a hot sauce that you could add to it to make it a little spicier if you wanted to. They served it with this amazing bread. The bread was so, so good. You could tell that they like buttered the bread. It was like a multi-grain bread that they sort of buttered on both sides with like salted butter. And then they grilled it on both sides. So it came out like really crispy and, um, and very tasty and flavorful. Uh, we decided to get it also with a beer. And now this beer that we got was a different beer than we've knew, normally been getting. Normally we've been getting uh, Pilsen, right? But we got Cusqueña. And Cusqueña is also like a beer that's made here in Peru. So it's like another Peruvian beer of the people. So anyway, this, this soup was super, super delicious. As we ate down a little bit further, we could find the big chunks of beef. And as you can see, it's like a cut of beef that's very like kind of fatty. So um, when it's stewed for a really long time, it gets this like delicious flavor that it adds to the soup. Uh, really, really good. And after that, I was still hungry, actually. <laughs> so in order to try out another kind of soup, I wanted to try the chicken soup because they have seven soups, right? Siete sopas, one soup for each day of the week. But every day of the week, you can get their chicken soup. It's kind of like their classic thing, chicken noodle soup. And it was really, really good. It came out like this. And the noodle, the thing I liked about it the most was the noodles were like, um, they weren't cooked in the soup. So they did the noodles separately. They have pasta dishes on the menu, so they have a lot of pasta. So they did the noodles separately, and it seemed like they added them into the soup right before they brought it out. So they were still kind of like al dente, you know what I mean? They were not mushy, they weren't falling apart in the soup. The soup also had a hard boiled egg in it, which I thought was really cool. I've never seen chicken soup with a hard boiled egg in it, but I really enjoyed it. And as we ate down further, we could see the large piece of chicken. It was a dark meat chicken, which I like better than white meat chicken. I thought it was very, very um, flavorful, but also like not overcooked. I think it's something that they add in separately. So they sort of assemble the soup at the end so none of the uh, ingredients get overcooked and they assemble it and then bring it out to you. And the hard boiled egg itself also was not overcooked. When I cut it open, it still had a nice orange yolk. It was not overcooked. So it must be something that they sort of add in all together. And as you can see here in this picture, they have a prep station here that's separate from the soup area where they're making the broths and whatnot. And here's where they prep the bread. And I think also here is where they maybe would like prep, like add the noodles to the soup. And then behind the wall there is the actual kitchen because um, as you can see on the menu here, they have a lot of other dishes, not just soup here. So they're making a full on menu and they have a kitchen back there where they're making all of that stuff. But overall, this was really, really good. I can see why people like this restaurant and why it's so popular because the quality of the food was really top notch. It was very delicious. So that place was delicious. It was so delicious that I forgot to record an outro. So you're getting this outro from another time uh, in an undisclosed location. 
Uh, but honestly, I can see how both of those places in their time uh, were very, very popular. Even though Tip Top is not as popular as it once was, um, I can see how it was popular in its time, and I can definitely see how uh, Siete Sopas is extremely popular. And I can even see them expanding outside of Peru, to be honest, especially at other places in South America. So, um, I hope you liked the video. Uh, stay tuned, there's going to be a lot more content from Peru coming, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.